Today we'll be discussing my top pick 3D printers for any budget from $200 US all the way up to $1 million. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and yes, I hear you loud and clear. Every single day I am bombarded with requests by people for the best 3D printer for their budget. And I get it. Buying a 3D printer in the market is very difficult, especially when you have a certain budget to work with. And there is so many options, I can't really specifically decide for your needs and your use case. However, what I can do is tell you my top pick 3D printers for a given budget. Now they might not be suitable for your situation, but it might nudge you in the right direction to making the correct purchase. So full disclaimer, these are just my, my choices and this is just my opinion and you're completely responsible and on your own for making a final purchase. Let's get started with the cheapest budget range I would recommend for a 3D printer in 2018, 200 bucks. All right, guys, you've got 200 bucks to spend on a very low cost 3D printer. What should you get? Well, the Ender 2 is a Creality branded machine that comes to me on high recommendation. A lot of my friends on YouTube have tested this machine and they find it to punch well above its price point, which currently is a hundred and sixty dollars or sorry, it's hundred and seventy dollars US with um with very low cost shipping. Now, I usually recommend for the budget conscious the Tronxy or Tronix Y X1, which is this machine here. And I still very much like the Tronxy. If you've got very little money or you're not sure you're gonna to commit to 3D printing, this is a very low cost kit that's safe to put together for kids because it has no mains wiring and it's very small and very easy to get going. But both these machines, the Ender 2 and the Tronix Y, don't have cooling fans, which limits the print quality out of the box. So you'll need to do modifications for both of these machines to get them to print to the best of their ability, which will be pretty darn good in the case of the Ender 2, well, well above its price point. In the case of Tron XY, uh, X1, pretty good, but it's still not gonna compete with machines at much higher price points. Okay, let's double our money, $400 US or less. What would I recommend? Well, it's a pretty big no-brainer. The CR10 or any of its permutations are a surefire bet of a machine that will probably print very very well and last a long time be quite reliable and has a massive community around it the original cr10 is priced at 385 now on gearbest you can get the smaller one the cr10 mini i quite like that one for a little bit less and you can get the extended larger versions too i wouldn't really go too big because the cr10 original is already very very large in the x y and z coordinates heated bed well designed aluminium extrusion construction which is quite rigid and it just comes in a few parts you just put the gantry in place a few bolts in and you're good to go this machine is hugely popular and for good reason it's a very low price point for what you can actually get off it now honorable mention is the cetus 3d mark ii now a lot of people don't like the Cetus because it has a locked down slicer. And yes, the slicer, although making improvements, is locked down unlike other, other printers where you can run any slicer you want with standard G-code. You can feed in custom G-code now into their slicer, but it's a, bit of a, it's a bit of a workaround. I am putting the Cetus 3D in here though at price at 300 US though, because it's one of the best printing machines I own it, in, at all, period. Um, I only print in PLA, although you can get a heated bed for it. And this is the result you can get off this little machine. It's it's insane. So I don't, I don't know why this machine isn't more popular than it is. And a lot of people say I'm a fanboy for Cetus. And yes, I am. Because it does stuff like this with a scenario of that. It has a weird surface on the print, print bed, which you do need to print a raft. But if you're okay with that, um, I can highly recommend this machine. Also, it has Wi-Fi, which works really well and is super handy because it doesn't have any interface on it. So the CR10 and the Cetus are the two machines I would recommend for a $400 US or less budget. But what if we have $600 to spend? What would you get? Well, it's a bit of an unusual, strange price point. We're getting up beyond the budget printers, but not quite within the reach of prosumer printers. But now with the release of the Prusa Mark III, the original Prusa i3 Mark IIS kit has dropped down in price to bang on 600 bucks. And this machine has, has a humongous following. If you've been following Makers Muse for a while, you, you'll know that I respect Joseph Prusa quite a lot. 
And this machine has made waves in the 3D printing community and now it's cheaper than it has ever been. It's a kit. You do need to assemble it, but the instructions are the best I've ever seen, bar none. And you will get this machine together and it will print for, for a very long time. It has the mesh bed leveling, but it does not have the removable print surface that the newer Mark III does. So keep that in mind if you need that sort of thing. You will have to spend a bit more coin but I do very much like the Prusa Mark II S. Although keep in mind as well, even on the silent mode, it is quite loud. This i3 kit has uh, quite loud steppers and it will disrupt a room, even on silent mode, unless you sound dampen it quite a bit. Just my two cents. And as a bit of a wild card, I'm gonna throw in the Up Mini 2. Now my first ever 3D printer was an Up Mini and it did me years of faithful service. So the Up Mini 2 built on what the Up Mini was good at and added a HEPA filter, added Wi-Fi and all of these features that made this little machine fantastic. It only has a very small print volume of 120 cube, but you can print polycarbonate filaments on this little machine. It's a very strange sort of niche application machine. It will print small, very high quality parts in nylons or polycarbonates or ABS, but uh, not very large. But for the price point, you're getting quite a lot of printer. And actually, interesting to note, Cetus and Up are owned by the same parent company, Tier Time. So you can run both these machines on the same Up Studio software. It's just It just communicates over Wi-Fi to both of them, and it works really well. I really like the Up Mini 2. The spool holder absolutely sucks. Just get rid of that, get an external spool holder. But it's a great little machine with a, with a really nice metal carry handle. I'm a bit of a fanboy for these machines, but if you want engineering quality parts, you can't really go wrong. Okay, we're moving up the ladder to one grand. What can we get for a thousand big ones? Well, is it really a surprise? The new Prusa i3 Mark III is a fantastic printer that I've been testing. Review coming out soon. It's the newest version from Joseph Prusa. I just mentioned that the i3 Mark IIs is now cheaper because of this one being released. But if you have a bit more money, you can get this machine and it's better in pretty much every aspect. The print quality is the same, but it's quieter. It has the mesh bed leveling, but it also has all these smarts like detecting filament outages or collisions, and the bed is removable, which I love on 3D printers. Um, by the way, the Up Mini 2 has a removable print bed too, which is awesome, um, but I just love having being able to take the print bed out of my machines and flex them to, print, to get the parts off, instead of hacking at them and ruining your bed level and damaging the machine over time. Not very elegant. So you can get the assembled Mark III for a grand, or you can buy the kit, which I just recently assembled over on my side channel, Make His Muse Live, uh, while I was talking to other people. So it's very easy and very casual to put together with a few fiddly bits, but not too bad, and a fantastic in, uh, instruction manual. So you can get the kit for 750, or you can get the assembled machine for a grand. Also, I'm not talking about shipping for any of these machines, um, but you, you really will get a good machine with a fantastic uh, warranty and support network around it if you can spring a little bit more than the Chinese machines like the CR10. Okay, now we're reaching into the prosumer segment for 3D printers. $2,000 is a lot of money, but it really starts to open up doors in terms of quality of prints and the sort of machines you can purchase and the technologies you have access to. So my pick for a $2,000 budget is the PO Poly Moai. This is an SLA or stereo lithography 3D printer that uses liquid resin and a UV laser to cure it or polymerize that liquid resin into a 3D print. This allows you to achieve pinpoint accuracy and phenomenally low layer heights of down to 20 microns if you really want to. I was actually fortunate enough to test a PO Poly Moai in its pre-production state. In fact, you can see my review right here on their website. And um, it was a Kickstarter project, which was phenomenally successful and shipped very much on time. And now you can buy it for $1,250 US. And uh, it's if you want high detail prints, liquid resin technologies like SLA or DLP, are the way to go because you cannot achieve the detail you want for figurines or small jewelry parts in FDM, which is fused deposition modeling, which are all the other machines I've mentioned. You just can't do it. The nozzle sizes are like 0.4 millimeters. It's just not up to scratch. But with resin technologies like the PO Poly Moai, you really can. Now, a, a bit of a disclaimer with the Moai, it is a very manual process in terms of getting the bed level and that first layer accurate. You do need to know a bit about running these machines. It is a bit of a learning curve getting the, the parts uh, ready for the machine with support material and that kind of thing. 
So for the price point, you're getting a really high detail printer, but there will be a bit of a learning curve in terms of running it and the resin is quite messy, you need to wear gloves, and the parts need to be post-cured with a UV light afterwards. But if you're okay with that, you can achieve incredible prints with this machine. Absolutely insane. Let's bump our budget up to $3,000 US. What can you buy for three grand that would make financial sense? Well, in 2015, I was fortunate enough to test and review the Cubicon Single. And this is one of the few FDM machines in the prosumer market with an actively heated build chamber allowing you to print very large parts in ABS plastic without any worry of warping at all. In fact, it has a really clever bed that mechanically levels itself, um, like with motors. Not, none of this mesh bed leveling sort of software compensation, it moves the bed to make it level. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for an incredibly intelligent machine which can print fantastic quality and it's enclosed with a HEPA filter. This is the machine to go for if you're a school or university, in my opinion. The, the quality is fantastic and it has that professional uh, design and outlook which you'd expect from a prosumer machine. Now, you are paying a lot. It's, it's priced here on iMaker, just under 3000 US. And um, the thing about the Cubicon machines is they're so clever that if something goes wrong, you can't really fix it. You have to send it back um, or get a technician to look at it. They're not as simple as a low cost machine like the CR10, for example. So keep that in mind, guys. If you're gonna buy a Cubicon Single Plus, you wanna be close enough to a reseller or a, uh, or a distributor like iMaker that if something goes wrong, you can actually get the machine back to them to fix it, which is a big issue if you're getting it sent from another country. So I wouldn't recommend that. I'd only buy these machines if you can actually get them back to the manufacturer or back to a reseller if something happens because you're paying an awful lot of money, you deserve a good warranty. There's no other two ways about it. $5,000 US. What can you possibly purchase that might cost 5,000 US? Well, the Form 2. I, again, had the honor of testing a Form 2, which was sent to me by Form Labs as a loaner unit, and I reviewed it on the channel, and I had to send it back. This is the, one of the best, if not the best machine I've ever tested on Maker's Muse. It is very similar in quality for the print quality to the Moai using SLA technology, but it has automatic everything. It has Wi-Fi built in, a full color screen on the front. It has full compensation for the resin that comes in, that the tray that fills up with resin is automatically filled up from a, from a cartridge at the back of the machine, and it has, a, has just so much intelligence built into it. I did not have a single print on this machine fail. Not a single one. And you'd expect that for, um, for a, a basically a, a ready-to-run starting price of $5,500. I mean, that does include the machine and some resin and the washing tank to wash the parts afterwards and the curing oven to cure the parts and make them hard and build platforms. But yeah, um, it's a lot of money. And especially for an individual, the Form 2 is kind of out of reach. I mean, $5,000 is very difficult to justify. This machine, however, I see huge potential for special effects labs and game art and development studios where you want to get a, a 3D model from the game and you can actually print it out in incredible detail to show investors or study form in the real world by getting a physical model. Um, you will get incredible detail. I printed um, this, uh, this amazing model of Rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy at like tiny scale on the Form 2 and you can't see the layers, it's incredible detail. It does cost heaps in consumables, the actual ink cartridges cost a lot and the beds are consumables too, they do wear out as the substrate gets damaged. But uh, if, you're, if you're serious about very high quality prints and you can make it financially viable, yeah, I can't say anything negative about this machine, which is what you'd expect once you're getting to these price points. There's $5,000 is, is lots of cash. Um, but we're going a little bit higher than that. Let's jump up to $10,000. But what 3D printer could you possibly buy for $10,000? Well, you can buy an SLS system. This is the Sinterit Lisa, and I actually was lucky enough to get some parts sent from Sinterit for me to check out the quality of it. SLS stands for Selective Laser Sintering, and it is a nylon powder, a polyamide powder that is sintered with a laser. And SLS has the fantastic 
capability of not needing support materials. The technologies we talked about before, FDM and SLA, they need support material. SLS doesn't, and it has its own disadvantages, which I went into detail with a video here, if you're interested, but these machines can create incredibly detailed object and job objects without any supports, like you can see here on, the, on their website. Now, $10,000 is basically a starting price because with SLS, you need finishing stations, you need to dust off the parts, you need to be very careful, it's very messy, and um, you also need to keep in mind that, again, going into, I go into another video, you can't reuse all the powder that isn't sintered. You have to throw away like half of it and replace it with virgin powder. So these machines are not for individuals and we've kind of crossed that threshold. Form Labs Form 2 is like, if you're really crazy enthusiastic about 3D printing, you can justify. Um, Cubicon Single, again, you can kind of justify. Sinter at Lisa, it's for, it's for companies. It's for batch production and companies where you're gonna print lots of things at once to justify its existence. And we've crossed the li line pretty much from prosumer into industrial at this point. And if you're looking at 3D printers for industrial use, for example, in a large design studio or a design firm where you're gonna be printing all the time and the machine must never break down, you're gonna also have to spend a little bit more even than this. So let's jump up to the next price point of $20,000. For a cool $20,000, you jump up into Stratasys technology, the original inventors of FDM. The U-Print is the starting point if you're serious about high quality FDM. So by buying a machine from the original inventors of FDM, you're buying you know, all of those years of te technological prowess and um, things that are still locked away in patents. So you get a build oven which is completely heated perfectly for warpless ABS printing and the components aren't going to overheat because they're separated with bellows which is still under patent and you get a patent protected soluble support material that dissolves in a very alkaline solution. Now the U-Print system does come with the soluble support washing bath and U-Prints have cartridges. Stratasys machines have chipped cartridges like your inkjet printer. So you're buying a really expensive machine to start with, then you're buying into an ecosystem of expensive cartridges, expensive print surfaces that technically you're not meant to reuse, and in a lot of cases, you're buying into a maintenance contract as well. Because at least the machines that were at UTS when I was studying there, U University of Technology Sydney, they would often fly someone from Melbourne to fix the Stratasys machines when they broke down as part of a maintenance contract and they paid through the nose for that. But if you need a 3D printer that literally never stops working, um, you, you pay for it. And $20,000 for a very large company for that benefit of a machine that you literally press go and it always works, soluble support put in the bath, always dissolves, parts always look good it might be worth it. Again, we're looking at industrial machines here for industrial industrial prototyping and industrial purposes. No person in their right mind will own one of these in their house, nor will they own the next machine price point. Let's be honest, up to this point, we've really just been talking about silly money. Um, like $20,000, eh, it's just a drop in the ocean, isn't it? Let's, let's see how much we can buy for, um, for $200,000. The Fortis 450MC and its slightly smaller brother, the 380MC, are industrial level FDM 3D printers from Stratasys. These machines are massive, they have a massive price tag attached to them, they print in proprietary materials, they come with maintenance contracts, and they are absolute workhorses. They will print day in, day out, without ever stopping, and if you can justify them, they will be able to serve you with 3D prints. But, it's a big but. Um, when I was in Perth, we were quoted on a 450MC demo model for $250,000 Australian on a demo, a demo machine, not, not, a, not a brand new machine. And you, the price point for these machines is just another world. But to put it in perspective, these machines are, are not even closely related to the machines you're getting out of China like the CR10. For example, the build size of the 450MC is only only 400 by 355 by 400 millimeters, but the machine weighs 600 kilograms and it's massive. So it's a different world. And these machines can print if you pay for the upgrade 
in Ultem, which is an aerospace plastic, which doesn't catch fire, it resists burning, and um, has very high temperature resistance. So if you have to print in that, for example, for aerospace, or for example, for the automotive industry, for prototyping, or medical, or you, know, you have to design architectural work that you know, has to print perfectly, which I know some people use these machines for, and you have to get like first shot, it has to work perfectly, no warping, no failing in ABS, with soluble support, again, um, then, then these are the machines that you buy. And it's a really hard sell for Stratasys now to sell these machines, but they still do have a market. And for this price point, you're gonna be paying for the machine, you're gonna be paying for a maintenance contract, and you're gonna be paying for the consumables, which are roughly, if I remember correctly, around $1,000 Australian per, per cartridge, which is like two and a half kilos. Something, something roughly like that. A lot of money. Anyway, we can go even higher than this. Let's see what we can buy for, oh, I don't know, roughly $500,000. This is the Stratasys J750 3D printer, designed for industrial use 3D printing of prototypes. What makes it special? Well, for a start, you're probably gonna end up paying over half a million dollars for it, but this machine can print in full color with gradients and different types of materials. I'm talking different hardnesses. I'm talking different opacities and transparencies. This machine can produce prints like this. Now, this technology is known as polyjetting, where it's similar to SLA or, or other machines with liquid resins, but instead of like having a bath and a laser that polymerizes it, it has print heads that jet this polymer out, and then it's hardened with a UV light that passes over it. So these machines are so advanced now that they don't have just have to do that in one color, they can inject pigment into that resin as it gets laid down, and they can have multiple material baths of different geometers. For example, this shoe, they could have printed this rubber part in a softer geometer, which would be simulated to rubber. Now, the materials these machines use are known as like analog materials. They're designed to have similar properties to other thermoplastics, but they're not actually the same. They're actually still UV polymerized liquid resins and therefore they can't be recycled, they can't be melted down again, and they don't quite have the same properties. For example, this is digital ABS plus, which will be simulated to ABS, but it's not ABS. You have their Tango range of materials, which are rubbers, so they have uh, different geometers and they can actually change it by changing the, the, uh, the ratio of different resins at the same time by jetting it in. The thing about the rubbers though on these systems, for example, with this shoe, is they're not gonna be as tough as an injection molded rubber or a cast rubber because of the layer by layer process and the jetting process. In my experience, they're more like a felt. Like if you had a strip of this rubber, it will bend, but kind of not easily go back and they start to crack and fail over time. They may have improved. I mean, for half a million bucks, bloody hell, I hope they've improved to the machines I've used in the past. But, and it's a big but, if you're a multinational corporation designing products, you might see the value in a system like this producing prototypes or form studies for your investors or to get a really good feel of a product before it goes to injection molding and tooling because that in itself could cost millions upon millions of dollars. So if you can save that at this early prototype stage, then these machines might be cost effective. Also worth noting that they also need support material just like FDM and SLA does but you can actually use like a, a jelly-like uh, resin that, that jets in between all these layers. So they're not gonna show it here, but they'll have a jelly-like resin supporting the layer above it, and then they use a water jet to wash it off. And again, these, these are UV cured materials, so they're not gonna be great in sunlight and not gonna last as long as the real deal, um, like FDM parts will actually last a bit longer. But if you need full color straight off the machine, there's literally nothing else in the world that can do this. It is at the forefront of 3D printing technology and you're gonna pay for the privilege. But there is one more technology that actually goes beyond this and it's called DMLS or direct metal laser sintering. That is 3D printing in metals. Let's see what we could buy for a cool million dollars. 
This is the EOS M404, an absolute beast of a DMLS metal 3D printer that has four lasers working in tandem to print metal parts that are fit for end use. Metal 3D printing is a reality. It exists right now, but these machines are so incredibly complicated, expensive, and high-end that they only really exist in the medical, aerospace, and to a degree, automotive fields. So there is car companies like Koenigsegg that use metal 3D prints from machines like this in their production cars. It is happening today. But I'll be completely honest with you guys, I do not know the exact price point of the M404. Um, you are definitely looking, once you set it up, well over a million dollars. You will need a full-time technician or multiple people running these machines and they are a just a world above anything that I deal with here on Maker's Muse. Um, I do have a full metal 3D print from Shining 3D on their direct metal laser sintering system, but it was a lot smaller and it might be actually quite affordable, I don't know. But the, the thing with EOS is they are industry leaders in DMLS and you can print in almost any metal you like, titaniums, tool steels for, for molds, even aluminium for lightweight parts, and n like nickel alloys, super alloys even, for high temperature resistance and corrosion resistance in aerospace. These machines are insane, and you can easily spend over a million dollars buying a 3D printer. Now I did note down how much, how many CR10s you could buy instead of one of these, and, um, and you could buy just around 2,500, 2,500 CR10s, roughly, for the price of one of these. So, yeah, it gets pretty crazy towards the higher end. And that's gonna do it, guys, for this top picks for 3D printers in 2018 at a given price point. You guys asked for it, and here you go. I know, I'm, I know you weren't asking for a million dollar printer, but come on, like, there's so many machines out there, I couldn't help myself. So I hope this video assists you in your choices of 3D printers and gives you a bit of an idea of just how many there is and why it's almost impossible for me to help you on an individual basis. I do have my 2016 buyer's guide for 3D printers and it is still very relevant because it doesn't talk about specific brands, it talks about different features that you want to look for. It's linked in the description and I'm working on a 2018 version which will start talking about resin printers as well because that version is only talking about FTM and you'll get a, a massive discount when that book rolls out if you buy the 2016 version. So definitely check that out if you're looking to buy a 3D printer currently and it's an FDM one, but I hope this video helps you. And if you did enjoy it, guys, please hit that subscribe button. It takes me a long time to research all of this for these videos. I'd love to have you on board. My name's Angus and I aim to empower your creativity with 3D printing and look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye. and rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He is actually...